I guess we can start imagining what we were talking about this morning, that there is that genetic memory in built in us. Um, and perhaps those live birds are learning a song that they never heard um, from somewhere special. Um, and I think that's reflected in the work that Michael's doing. Um, I'd like to make a special welcome <laughs> to um, the students who have come to us from the Campbelltown Master Arts class that we're working with, who we're working in collaboration with on, on, on the project. Um, so I'll just give you guys a minute to settle in. <laughs> There's some seats up the back as well. Um, so one thing that Michael men didn't mention, um, which I also think is quite interesting, is, is, is within our traditions, um, when a baby was born, um, the family members would make a few pelts and stitch them together, make a small blanket, um, and that would be given to the child. As that baby grew, more, more pelts were collected, more pelts were sewn on, and over your lifetime, you'd end up with a, with a proper cloak, um, a full-size cloak um, for you. And when you passed away, that cloak, you're, you're wrapped in that cloak and, and you're buried. And I think that notion of reconnecting objects, um, reconnecting our ancestral objects to the objects of the next generation um, is something that's really connected to, to the work of our next speaker. Um, so Thelma Thomas is actually, uh, uh, is, it works here at the museum um, and is actually, um, I'm trying, sorry, is the project coordinator here, the youth project coordinator here at the Australian Museum um, and works on a project, uh, sorry I've lost my notes, um, works on the project called Youth Re uh, Reconnection Project um, and has actually been working really hard for a number of years actually taking this collection um, and connecting it to younger people within the, the Aboriginal and Pacific Islander community, um, which is a really important way of making a, con a collection, as we've heard, come alive. Um, a, connection, a collection without memories, without connections, um, without the networks that we always talk about as Aboriginal people, um, how we're all connected together, um, is not a collection. So um, please welcome Thelma to talk about some of those connections now. Nisan Bulavanaka, thank you Jonathan and thank you Uncle Michael for sharing that with us. It, being a Fijian person from the Pacific, it reminds me of the bark cloths and the different, you know, ceremonies that happen from birth and then we pass and we also part, take with us. We give in the, the bark cloth when we come in and it goes with us when we pass, so thank you for that and really enjoying all the speakers today. Um, but before I start, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that we meet upon here today, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and also pay my respects to the elders that have passed and that are present here today. My name is Thelma Thomas, Alessi Anawai, also known as MC Trade due to my former years as a hip hop artist. So if I start singing or rapping, you know why. I am a Sydney-based woman and I was born here, born in Suva, Fiji and moved to Sydney in 1988 and currently based here at the museum since 2012. So I will be talking about the Youth Reconnection Project and how we utilise the collections to connect and engage with young people. So behind me is an image of a carver ceremony taking place at a community event that we attended in Western Sydney with my colleagues Karen and Yvonne that are here. Um, this was at a Fiji Day event in 2012. So in Fiji, before you enter a village, you have to take a gift of Yangono, the carver route, a sevu sevu, and ask permission from the chief of the village there will be an exchange in dialogue whereby you state who you are, where you are from and where you sit in, in the village and in the hierarchy of Fiji and social structure. This lets people know how you are connected to them and also identifies the order in which the yangona or the kava is to be drunk. This is common practice and is done every time you enter the village space. And this image captures that moment here in Sydney at an opening of a community event. Today, this practice of asking permission and being mindful of people's spaces continues with me. It is also why and how I work in the spaces that I do. 
I am not from this land and it's important for me, I believe, to give back to those of this land before I can do the work that I do. So I thank you for inviting me to be a part of this space and to contribute and my talk today is part of my Sevu Sevu. I started here at the museum in 2012 on a project that was initiated by Fairfield Juvenile Justice where at-risk young people um, from Pacific communities um, were interested in learning a bit more about their cultural heritage so one of the staff members um, decided maybe we could bring some of these young people into the museum collections and they would find out a bit more about where they're from and who they are. My first um, introduction into the collections was with my previous manager, Dion Peter, who's not with us today, but who's over in Aotearoa. And 60,000 pieces, we go downstairs in the Pacific um, collections area. And the first piece he takes me to is a, is a bowl, a small wooden bowl, smaller than that carver bowl that's on the screen. He didn't know where I was from, who I was connected to, but the first piece he showed me came from my mother's land in, Rewa, in the Rewa River. And it was one of the first objects that was um, registered. It had like an eight number, and we've got about 60,000 pieces. So for me, that was like, okay, my permission and my kind of thing, I need to be here, and I'm going to continue with this work. It reminded me of Tasha's story, actually, Tash and the Stone, that, she, that you shared this morning. And, you know, I felt that, con and I understood what you were saying about that connection, because I felt it when I picked up that bowl when I went into the collections that day in 2012. Now, the Youth Reconnection Project utilises parts of these collections, images from these collections, but also pieces from the educational um, kit that we have. We take these pieces out to different um, different organisations, different community gatherings out throughout Western Sydney and encouraging young people to learn about our cultures. It's a project in partnership with juvenile justice, community orgs, young people and their families as part of a process to reconnect them with their cultural heritage to contribute towards a positive self-identity and encouraging them to make better life choices. In 2014, the project was extended to include the um, engagement of working with Aboriginal and, and Torres Strait Islander young people. I was going to these spaces and we'd have Aboriginal people, young people coming into the space asking me questions in the centres. So I'd come, come back and I'd spoken to Phil Gordon and our managers at the time and eventually we were able to extend it and bring on an um, Aboriginal youth worker, Christopher Reid. We also worked closely with the staff here on site, Derek Walker, um, Tasha Lamb, who's also contributed, and Mariko Smith, who's no longer with us but is present here somewhere. There you go. So we've been doing that work um, for quite a few years now, and also Karen and Yvonne have assisted as well. One of the, um, one of the most memorable experiences um, was out in a centre in Campbelltown. It was a recent one, actually, not in my notes, but I'm just picking up from what people have spoke about earlier and connecting them to some of the experiences that I've had as well. We, had, we took out a kangaroo skin cloak, Tash and I, and we were working with a group of young people in the Reby Juvenile Detention Centre in Campbelltown, and Tash showed him the cloak, that, and he picked it up, and he was like, can I try it on? So he'd put it on, and I, you can see his whole demeanour just change. Like, you know, these kids have been in that centre for quite a while, but just seeing them react to the cloak, you know, and the transformation you could see in front of us was quite powerful. So, you know, that was one of the, the memorable uh, events that have occurred throughout the pro this project. When we're going out to the centres, the content is always different. So sometimes we'll go out and speak to the workers, then I'll do a bit of a session with the young people. I always make sure if there isn't a, 
um, a staff member from the museum available from the Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander unit. I will partner with a community organisation in that area that can provide a staff member that can talk to the young people. If it's specific, then I will step forward and speak about the, the collections. So we ask them what they're interested in. We'll take the table out and spread it out and ask them, do you know what this piece is? Do you know what this is made from? Do you, have you seen this before? And the stories will come out. I remember, you know, seeing this under my mum's bed or I remember seeing this hanging up on the wall. And, you know, the stories start to come out. Sometimes, you know, they'll ask questions they probably don't get to ask, you know, in school or in other social settings. So it was quite, can be quite a rewarding experience for both. And from there, we take the content and then design the program. So if they're into, you know, weaving, then I'll come back and ask, OK, do we know any Pacific weavers? Do we know any um, local weavers that would come, can come in and share some of the, the work with us? If they're into music, you know, and they're Fijian artists, I'll go away and look for some Fijian or Pacific musicians that might be interested and bring in their works. And then also look at objects in our collections that they may, that, um, you know, they may be interested in. So it, it, um, it varies quite a bit. Yep, so there's a list of the different types of things. So on site, they can view the collections, um, we'll do some knowledge workshops, but also um, activities, workshops as well, and then outreach will go out into either the centres, so previously Juniperina, um, Reby, Cobham, and also work with the service centres in Blacktown and Petersham and then sometimes we go to the community centres in the um, areas where we know we've got high population so if it's um, around the Blacktown area, the Penrith area, Campbelltown area and then we do the museum pop-up activations like the first image that I showed you. So going out to where the young people and the families are and just getting feedback about what we're doing as well and of course these Projects can only happen if we have these strong partnerships with the different communities, groups and organisations. So out in the community, um, oops, moving ahead there. So on the left, there's a group out in Colleton. So we had a Pacific group and an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander group. So we'd start together and then we'd separate and they'd work on activities. So if it's music, if it's painting, if it's dance, if it's art, and then we bring it back together. And so it's a great way of um, that intercultural exchange as well, especially in areas where there's been tension. So we found them to be quite positive. And then at the end, that's an example of some of our pop-up you know, presentations at um, an NRL event that was out in Parramatta. Um, it was a big Pacific Cup, a football match. Um, this one is in the collections, so on the left the Pacific collections there, so the young people will come in with the officers and um, we get to go through and have a look and they're always fascinated, you know, like you can hear a pin drop and I guess they feel it too when they walk in that it is a sacred space and it is a special place and, and they're always respectful, we have not had it's always a positive um, experience and they're always really respectful. They're always asking questions about what is this, how is it made? And, you know, just highlighting the fact that, you know, there are all these technologies that existed and that our ancestors have and that they too can tap into, you know, of how things are made, that there was no Bunnings, there was no GPS. We knew how to navigate on the sea, in the land. We knew how to make things, you know, it's, and it's part of them and part of what they're capable of, you know. And on the right there we have Rebecca, who's also a staff member assisting with the group. Always positive. This is some of the feedback from some of the staff on the top and then the young people. So the staff, you know, in order for these to happen, the staff in the centres also have to be... Um, you know, supportive to make this happen and there's some feedback from them. But down the bottom, you know, some of the feedback that we've written down, you know, I learnt a lot about my mob, a lot of history, makes me happy seeing the objects, um, you know, and the way that the different workshops were facilitated. 
So we always get their feedback and if I tell them, if you don't like what we're doing, just tell us, you know, we can go back and change it a bit. If you're not understanding what we're saying and what we're doing, you know, you tell us because you, you, this, these projects are for you and if you're not liking it, then no use us being here, you know, sharing this with you. Um, so when Jonathan asked me to talk about um, a talk here today, this image was sent to me, it's part of the image on the left, and it was an image of a Fijian dance group that was there at the Garden Palace performing. I don't know how many weeks they were there, but they were flown in to um, do a special dance, a meke, a Fijian dance. And I'd not seen Fijian dancers dressed up like this, and I'd shown it to a few elders and a few family members, and no one to this day has said to me that they've ever seen the dancers dressed up like this. So, you know, they're wearing, um, it, look, it could be bark cloth, it could be other types of fabric and their hair's covered. Someone was saying they used to wear, have a lot of dreadlocks, you know, and they had really elaborate hairstyles. If you look at Fijian um, warriors and Fijian community members back in the day. So part of me thinks, you know, was that really part of the dress that they were wearing at that time? you know, or, or was it put on them that day for the performance to cover up, you know? So that, that's um, a bit of a journey that I'll be taking on and researching. I, I showed it to a Fijian dance group that I work with today, the one on the right, who'd performed here at the museum a couple of years ago, and they too hadn't seen it, but it made them go back and think about, you know, some of the costumes that they have. They're organising a theatre production in October, so they're taking some inspiration from that image to recreate some of the different styles of Fiji and um, costumes that they're going to wear. So we'll ho hopefully have some new images up soon. But yeah, I just thought it was interesting to put the two up and both, you know, performed here at the museum. Um, you know, and I think the one on the right would have been better received. But just, um, you know, and they seem to have a lot more fun. The ones on the left... Um, you know, I still don't know much about um, where they f they came from or which part of Fiji, but very interesting that they were part of that, um, the spectacle or part of the, the performance there at Garden Palace. And it is unfortunate that most of those, actually all of those objects were lost, but um, I'm, I, you know, I'm thankful that we have a lot of positive and a lot of strong cultural thinkers and cultural activists here in Sydney in this room and around the world that are fighting you know and working hard to make sure that the cultural knowledge is um, I guess you know found and also re it's also almost kind of a awakening I've, I've been experiencing over the last you know, a few years where I see it on the front line, you know, how young people are so hungry. They're like, they want to learn. What is this? I want to learn to dance. I want to know about my ancestors. I want to know about my past. So, you know, the museum has a great role and other cultural institutions in, um, and more of a positive role in helping that facilitation with our young people and to ensuring that our cultures continue to grow. And, you know, resilience, it, it does speak of our resilience as Pacific people and, you know, um, and just to see the, the, the different movements that are coming up, you know, to ensure that First Nation cultures are being strengthened and learnt, that we can all learn from it. I wanted to play a short video of some of the workshops so you can hear from the young people about some of the work that we've done and less talking from me. So we're going to just bring that up. So this project was um, with a partnership with Street University and Mount Druitt. So we'll have a listen to this and we'll have some questions after.
Uh, my name's Jomma Thomas, also known as Ben Sutro, and I'm a youth worker based at the Australian Museum. This project is called Deadly Dreaming. Um, it's a partnership with Street University and the Australian Museum. My name is Christopher Reeve. I'm a Dungari mayor. Uh, my family group is Malawindi. Malawindi meaning like water. My role at the Australian Museum is the Aboriginal and Strait Islander youth worker. We have uh, invited a lot of uh, Aboriginal brothers and sisters to come down and to learn a lot more about our culture. We are working with the Aboriginal boys and girls from the area that are based to Street University and that go to local high school. My name is Aaron Saunders, I'm with Milroy Birupar Mayor and my role here at Street University in the is the Assistant Manager and I'm also AOB Indigenous Council. The project Deadly Dreaming, it's about culture and identity and it's about working with young people, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island young people encouraging them to learn about culture and our people we don't learn by writing and reading out of books. The way us young ones would learn is by doing our paintings, by singing our songs, by doing our dancing. And this is the way that we learn. Uh, my name is Jermaine Thurston, um, Muroy. <laughs> My name is Ian Scandal and my role is the music program for CESA. The music program that we run out of the Deadly Dreaming program, it, it explores um, music, more specifically around Indigenous music and Aboriginal music, and we talk about it with young people, and then after all this exploring and what music means to them and how much of an impact music can make, the young people, they create their own. And they talk about you know their culture, where they come from, their identity, and so forth. Everyone involved, from the kids to the adults, you know the teachers, they're eager to learn. It teaches me more about Aboriginal culture as well. Um, I learned a lot about my culture and about other people's culture and a lot of artifacts about, about what we use. We're hoping that at the end of the nine weeks, the young people can walk away with a little bit more knowledge about their culture themselves and learn new skills. So whether it's in painting or dance or dig, and then hopefully they can learn from each other and then go and share that knowledge with their young brothers and sisters and family and friends. And this is the way that we are adapting into today's lifestyle. In our culture there's not a competition. No one is better than anybody. It's very important that we all unite, we all stand up together and we all move forward. That's our main aim. That, that song they created. So we did some lyric writing workshops. I'm Aboriginal, I'm strong and proud. I've got the knowledge in my family. Thousands of years there, we still survive. I've got the knowledge in my family by my side. So, you know, the young, these young people are choosing these different elements to tell their story. And I always find that hip hop music and hip hop culture is a great way to connect because that's what they're listening to, that's what they're partaking in, and that's the vehicle that we're using. And then you insert the content that, you know, whether it's cultural knowledge or it's knowledge about the cultural material. So, Almost makes me smile when I see that video. So, you know, th I just wanted to say thanks for having me. And, you know, as always, the way forward is together. And, yes, it's, it's a three-layered, three-tiered uh, conversation and story, like, you know, a strong piece of rope together. It's stronger. And, you know, I look forward to the continuation and more positive projects for our young people and our communities here in Sydney. So thank you, Vanaka. Okay.